Hey everyone, it's Rob Stanley with the Ecom Wiz podcast. And today my special guest is Mike Jackness. He's co-founder of Ecom Crew. Hey Mike, thanks for being on. Hey, thanks for having me. This is uh, gonna be fun, I think. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna have a good time and give out some great information. So Mike and I today are gonna be talking, or at least start off talking about like building assets or, or you can even call them brands. Brands are outside, outside of Amazon to actually come up with product ideas and create products based on some of these uh, ideas that you have uh, building this, you know, kind of network and assets outside of it. Why don't you explain it? I'm not explaining it perfectly, Mike. Why don't you go ahead and explain yeah. a little bit more? Well, I always like to give some background because like you never, you don't, you can't know where you're going if you don't know where you're from, right? And so uh, one of the, the disadvantages of being uh, as old as dirt as I am is that like when you get out of bed in the morning, like everything snap, pack, crackles and pops. I sound like Rice Krispies in the morning, but uh, the advantage is you get smarter, right? at least theoretically, and, and learn a bunch of things along the way. And, you know, since we've been doing online marketing and stuff since 2004 uh, and e-commerce since 2012, we, we've learned a lot along the way. And, you know, the, the Amazon was an awesome spot to be in in 2015 when we first really got into Amazon. You could throw anything up there. And I mean, I, I, I think you could sell poop on Amazon and it would like, it would just be successful. It was so easy. You put Maybe up, you poop know, bags, go with poop poop bags, bags for sure. You could right? definitely you sell, go. you know, and, and the thing you could do was basically like these, these fake reviews. Like, I mean, I, I left the five-star review in exchange for a free product type thing or whatever. Yeah. And the thing just like, boom, it would just, it would just sell. And that was awesome, but things change. Right. Yeah. And, and the environment that we're in now uh, is you can't do that any longer. Uh, competition's gotten way stronger. You're no longer the only poop bag or, or fake poop or whatever that you're selling on Amazon. There's there's 20 other people doing the same thing as you. And a certain percentage of them are doing a bunch of black hat tactics. They're you know doing search find buy stuff or they're uh, you know they're paying for reviews or they're even worse, like filing fight, false IP complaints against you and like giving you fake reviews. I mean, there's all kinds of horrible stuff that's happening now. Um, and for someone like me who has learned my lesson with this. You know, I, I've, again, been doing online marketing stuff since 2004. Uh, I've had the Google penalties where like, I woke up one morning and my site was completely gone. Uh, and I've had it happen more than once as I'm a slow learner. And uh, <laughs> in, in e-commerce, the same thing can happen here. You know, Amazon shuts your account down because you're doing black cat tactics, but the stakes are way higher. Now we have $1.3 million of inventory. Uh, you know, when we were doing affiliate marketing, if Google shut our site down, it sucked, but there was no inventory. Whatever money we had made to that point was already in the bank. It's a much different story with Amazon. And so because of all those things, it kind of sets up what we'll talk about today, which is like, how do you build assets or stack the deck in your favor in a white hat way that'll work long-term? That isn't a gimmick where like I'm searching on a forum or reading some guru's website or whatever, that's talking about this new trick that they found that works for a week or a month or six months, or maybe even a year. But at some point, uh, the, the hens come home to roost, their chickens come home to roost. And so what we've been building is, you know, kind of going back to our roots of content marketing, what I got started on in 2004. And so a great example of this is uh, we own tactical.com and we've been building out tactical.com uh, for a little bit, a little bit over a year, getting close to two years now. We we first started a couple of years ago, but like really this last 12 months, we've been really focused on its growth and it's grown uh, over 10X this year. I'm really proud of that and happy with that. And so it, it's an opportunity to do several things. First of all, you get people at top of funnel. You, know, you get these early searches, like before people have made a decision to buy product um, and get them on your email list. And be there when they're ready to make that purchase decision. And it costs you very little to, to be able to, to be a part of that funnel. Uh, it also allows you to write product reviews and be there a little bit further down the funnel when people are ready to buy. But you know, Amazon's like 55% of product searches, Google's still like 85% of non-product searches. And so yeah. being earlier in that process uh, can be very lucrative. And so what we've now done is built a site that gets tens and tens of thousands of free unique visitors every month, a certain percentage of them end up on our email list. All of them get pixeled within you know, a Facebook audience. We're getting mm -hmm. tons of data. Uh, and then we're able to market to them uh, by giving out great content, free lead magnet downloads and get them to be part of a community. We also offer like free plus shipping offers and get them 
to make like a micro purchase and have an opportunity to sell them some of our other products in the future. Uh, and then we also have an opportunity to rank for really awesome things like tactical gloves or what are the best tactical gloves or what's the best entrenching tool shovel. And then our article that's there uh, recommends our product as the number one product. Uh, and then we get to send traffic off to Amazon again in a very white hat way. Number one, Amazon loves outside traffic. These are yeah. sales that are being generated from an outside source. We are able to then take that traffic and send it somewhere else if the crap ever hit the fan with Amazon. So we're not as beholden to Amazon. I mean, everything changes. Like Amazon will not be the number one place to buy stuff forever. Uh, eventually things will change. I don't know that that's going to happen anytime soon. I mean, they, they are a gorilla in the space, but Sears also was the 800 pound gorilla at one time too. So, so it was eBay. Yeah. Changed. So it was eBay. Great point. Yeah. yeah. And so it was eBay. Absolutely. And now who bothers selling eBay anymore? I mean, it's like 1% of our sales. So yeah. Well, mainly used stuff now. It seems like used stuff does really well on eBay. But mm -hmm. I do have a question for you. So so you're describing this site. Now, is this more of like a blog slash information slash review type site? It, where it's not, I mean, you're not talking about like a Shopify store. This isn't a Shopify store, right? Correct. Yeah. But you, you can do it on the Shopify platform. I can give you another example of this. I mean, one of the brands that we sold last year uh, in April of 2019 uh, is called Color It!, and it's coloring books geared towards adults and, and all the supplies around that. And so for that site, we chose to do all this blogging on our actual Shopify store. And so we would rank for like, what, is the, what are the benefits of coloring? What are the best colored pencils, uh, you know, mandala coloring book, just like random stuff that was around coloring. And we built the content around that and ranked on the first page for all these different terms and got a bunch of free traffic to our e-commerce store. Uh, and so depending on some nuances, you may or may not want to do that on your own e-commerce store or do it on a freestanding blog, but sure. the concept is the same either way. Gotcha. And then, uh, so giving some advice out, I mean, obviously those names you gave with, you know, tactical.com and color it, those are great brand name, like .com names. So as we know, it, it is kind of rough right now, finding a good .com name. So give us maybe just a little bit of information on what can a new, not a new seller, but, you know, somebody who wants to kind of go this avenue and build more of their back end of their brand on Google, um, you know, what should they do as far as finding a name that would work for them or associated them? And, you know, can it be a longer name? I mean, you know, there's a lot around the whole naming and making sure that, you know, sometimes just getting the right naming can help you actually rank on Google. A hundred percent. So, in regards to what you're talking about there specifically, these things are referred to as keyword domains, you know, so like we used to having the right name. Uh, and so what that means is that your name consists of either exactly or in part something that people search for a lot. And so tactical is like one of those things where you know, people are searching the word tactical or uh, tactical plus some other word, tactical gloves, tactical flashlights, you know, uh, tactical plan or whatever it might be. And so having that keyword domain uh, can be quite helpful. And color yeah. it is not really a keyword domain. I mean, that was not really the, the purpose of that, but it's a short brandable domain name and it makes it an easy recognizable product. And so, yes, you have to pony up for these assets. These are not, not cheap assets to buy. Yeah. Um, I think color it we bought for, uh, I've had to go back and look, but I think it was in the $4,000 range. Maybe it was $2,500. And so my advice here is to, is to kind of like, we, we put together like a Google doc of like a wish list of all the different names that we wanted and color. It was somewhere on that list. And my approach, this is just to start emailing a bunch of different people trying to start a conversation. You're going to narrow down, you chop off half of them. They won't even respond to you. Yeah. Right. You know, the name's out there. Um, it's not being used. It's a park domain, or it looks like it hasn't been used in ages. Those are the opportunities you want to go after, but half of them aren't even going to email you back. So you just yeah. cross those off the list. And then you're going to strike up a conversation with someone who wants you know, crazy amount of money, crazy money for color <laughs> me or something or whatever. You're like, okay, I'm not giving you a hundred thousand dollars for that. Cause we have you know pretty good experience with, uh, you know, buying and selling domain names. So I kind of know what they're worth. Um, and with color rate, it came down to like three basically at the end. And one, like one five, one wanted four, one wanted like 2,500, let's say, and we just bought the one for 2,500 for, you know, so the, the point is like, don't get married to one name. Like you're obviously going to like one more than the other color honestly wasn't our first choice, but I still loved that name. Uh, and I missed that brand. I think it was a cool, a cool brand. Great um, name too. 
It was a great name. Yeah. yeah. And you know, it added a lot of clout to what we were doing and Google likes short brandable, you know, things like this. And so uh, we had a lot of success with it. I mean, it was a seven figure exit for us. Um, we've documented that, that whole process a lot along the way. Um, and I think that the name contributed quite a bit to it. You know, I think yeah. that it, it was no small part to it. It also allowed us to get a trademark and a whole bunch of other things. Um, you know, buying something like tactical.com is another like level. I mean, we have experience with, with these keyword domains. We also own like treadmill.com and icewraps.com, cuttingboard.com uh, and a whole bunch of others. Um, and, and so these are assets that are well in the five figures each. And I realize that not everyone has the wherewithal to do that. Um, and it's not a hundred percent necessary. I mean, quite frankly, the, the you know, I'm always willing to, to kind of throw myself under the bus. I mean, the, the reason that we ended up even developing tactical.com as an e-commerce type property or this information property is uh, because we already owned it. You know, we, we've been domain investors for a very long time. Yeah. We have a lot of these names like kind of on the shelf and tactical was like sparkly. I was like, oh man, this is a, this fits the plan that we're trying to do, you know, in, in 2017 and beyond when I was first thinking about this. And so uh, that's how it kind of happened. It, it might not have been the domain I would have gone after specifically, but we already owned it. And it's a great asset to, to build around things that I think are important. I mean, you want something that people are passionate about, that there's a depth of, of, uh, of topics you can write about over a long period of time, that there's an audience to be able to target people for on Facebook, that, you know, that, that passion that people have for this brand is going to make them also like recommend your brand and talk to their friends about it. And it creates some controversial topics that people will like really make uh, your content, help you make your content sticky and, and uh, promote it, even if they're complaining about it and all these different types of things. Yeah. Um, and then of course, you know, we, we kind of hit the lottery in that there now there's a pandemic and the site's even more relevant. And uh, that was just pure luck. And obviously I wish that it was anything else that could have happened the, to, to be there. But like, I guess you take, uh, you take the good with the bad. I mean, uh, yeah. we've been in business and had the opposite happen. So, um, so Mike, how, how many domain names do you have now and how many are active? Cause I, I, if you're like me, I've, I've got a ton of domain names I've been sitting on for quite a while. Yeah. I actually probably have less than you think. I, I think I have really? somewhere in a neighborhood between like 50 and 75. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah. But they're all like, they're all worth at a minimum, like high four figures. Most of them are worth like in the five figure range or, or, or more. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so, so I've, I've bought, I've been selective in, in what I've purchased. And so there, there are a lot of really good assets, a lot of one word things. I mean, I, I own like minimalism.com for instance, and which is one of my more recent purchases. Uh, we own uh, graphicdesign.com, wordpressthemes.com. Oh, wow. Um, a whole bunch of other like random stuff. Yeah. We got now, some, some of these are, are, are you buying some of these strictly to resell or to to possibly uh, develop at some point? Yeah, all the ones I purchased were the thought process was to re, to eventually develop them. Gotcha. Uh, when I bought a lot of them, the bulk of the ones I purchased were were 10, 10 to fifteen years ago. Yeah. Um, the the bulk of what I purchased, and when I was younger, I thought I could do everything, and I had this like vision. I was like, I'm going to like develop this network of all these different sites, and it's going to be super easy, no problem. Um, and then reality set in and it's just, it's much more difficult to do than, than you yeah. think. Um, and so um, it's basically become like th this library of assets that I have that, uh, that we do sell uh, some of them. Like we sold uh, online degree last year. We sold survivalfood.com last year. Um, and and you built these up though, right? You didn't just sell the domain name. Those, these were both of up? those were, were ones that we built up. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, and so typically the ones that we, the ones that we, the problem is like, it's hard to get the money you really want for the domains if it's, yeah. if it's just parked. And so like typically the ones that we end up selling are ones that we've started to do at least some minimal amount of work on. And uh, we're pretty good at getting things at the rank. Uh, yeah. And so you start to rank and all of a sudden people are like, oh my gosh, like, uh, people that are already in that industry, they just they just make you an offer you can't refuse and, and get out. And so that's what's happened with with several of them. Website hosting was another one that happened with. We bought that domain, developed it, got on the first page, and immediately like got an offer from someone in that space. And um, and so there's been quite a bit of that as well. Wow, that's great. I mean, that reminds me a lot. I mean, everything you just said reminds me a lot when I was trying to come up with my name for my iPhone company. I mean, we'd been a couple different names. They were too specific. We needed something that was catchy short uh and a name that was generalized that you know we didn't know if the iphone was going to rule the world you know but we were like we'd already seen 
Palm Pilots Go Away, you know, uh, right. Handspring, things like that. All these different companies had come and gone. So hmm. it actually with Direct Fix, I did the same thing. I made a big list on Excel, put a bunch of domain names that were either parked or possibly available or not too developed. Start just emailing out and you're right. Like half of them went away, half were crazy numbers, narrowed it down. I think I, I want to say I probably paid under $3,000 for Direct Fix back in the day. Yep. That's and it was just- name. It was a park name and it was just sitting there and, and, you know, I could trademark it. It hadn't been used. And uh, I mean, I, I still, to this day, I have domain names. I probably bought back in real early two thousands that I'm still sitting on. I own uh, free screen protectors.com um, screen screen. What was it? Uh, broken screen.com. Uh, at one, one time I owned actually bribe me.com and I actually let <laughs> nice. that go. And I let oh, that wow, one go. That's too bad. That's too yeah, bad. I should have held on to it. That's worth, that's worth, uh, at least thousands of dollars. I mean, Oh yeah. So uh, my question is though that, you know, and I have quite a few others that it, I don't want to just go on and on about this list, but the question, and, and you're exactly right. It's like some of these I'd like to develop. The thing is though, that it's like, okay, give the time, the time it takes, right? Like I've always run into the whole thing that, uh, and, and maybe you have this issue or tell us how you solve this issue. Okay. You get the, you get the domain name, you got to put content in it. Okay. Yeah. So are you developing the content or do you have writers doing it for you? Are you outsourcing that in-house? Give us a little more information on how you develop these sites. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm lucky now, you know, at this stage of my life that we have a team. And so as of recording this, we have 16 full-time employees, uh, several of whom are content writers. And um, I was actually just having a, a meeting with one of my team members last night about because we one of our team members is a full-time HR person. So we're really looking at like trying to like double our team by this time next mm -hmm. year. And, and most of that's going to be content. And so it is, it is tough to find, to find these people. But my approach has been to find full-time people that write content for you uh, that are coachable and, and that'll grow and, and understand like every article they write for you is a little bit more understanding that they have about, what you want, what your style is, and also about the root topic. And we've had a lot of success with it. Again, with tactical.com, um, you know, in that, in that approach, we've, we've grown a ton this year. I'm really excited about what we've been able to accomplish and we've done it without doing any link building to this point. And so, wow. um, you know, I was talking to some of my SEO friends and they're like, they can't believe what we've been able to accomplish is we're like a domain rank 14, but we're ranking, you know, at the top of the first page for, a lot of really competitive things. And so once we start doing some link building in, 20, in 2021, uh, we'll, we'll probably see even bigger results. And we're gonna have some full-time people working on that as well. But, but for me, you know, I, I've, I've tried every route. Like I've been the one trying to write the content, but mm -hmm. that's probably pretty stupid for, you know, a CEO of a seven figure company to, to be trying to write articles because as they're part of their job. I mean, I need to be working on, uh, you know, planning and like, and things of that nature and, and running this business. So it's not really great use of my time. I have done it in the past, but it's not scalable. I mean, like there's only so much time that you ever will have. And uh, if you're just getting started as a solopreneur, it's great. Like get the content up there. You'll probably yeah. write some really great stuff. Um, but we also try contractors and had some, you know, just, we just haven't had great luck with it. I think it's a fine way to, to approach things, but um, you know, we, uh, the issue at this point it, the contractor thing used to work okay, but you know, as of now, the bar is so high for the yeah. level of content you have to write if you want to actually rank. And so what, what I tell my writers, uh, we have like on a small tangent real quick, uh, but I think it's important here is that we have to write literally the best article that's ever been written on the internet about this subject. Yeah. And so if we're going to write an article about what are the best uses for an entrenching tool uh, or a folding shovel or whatever, or how do, what should you have in your bug out bag? Or how do you start a fire uh, in the, in this, any of these different types of topics? These are topics I've been written a lot about over the years. And a lot of people who are like ex military or that are really passionate about this stuff have written, you know, so it's, it's a high bar, but we can do it if you, you know, put the research in and the time. So we spend probably more time prepping for an article than we do actually writing the article just because the research is so important. The other thing I tell my, my writers is someone searches for something on Google, uh, which we, we want to rank for. Yeah. They cannot come to our article and click back. That's like the bar, right? Like if you haven't answered their, like if you haven't answered their question, they're going to click back. They're going to go to the next article. That's mm -hmm. kind of how we all use Google. 
Like you, you type into Google, like what's the price of tea in China or whatever the hell it is. The first article doesn't give you the answer. You're going to move to the second article and you're going to repeat this process until you find the answer and stop. You don't need to ask or find another answer about the same thing. Um, and so what Google's new algorithm is basically doing is like really favoring this process, which is I think why we've been doing so well. And this is, you know, Google wants to do things where you cannot game the system. This is like one of these things where you can't game this. Like if someone's searching for a particular query and doesn't hit the back button, which they know if you've done, then that's the best piece of content. It, it should be ranking higher than the things that people click back and went to the next one, went to the next one. And so that's the level which we're writing for, which often produces three, four, 5,000 word articles with a lot of graphics or video embedded in them and like really good formatting of the articles because you don't want it to like read like a book or present like a book because people on the internet don't consume content that way. They kind of right. scroll and skim and then they get to a graphic and they're like their eyes, like they, they'll look at the picture or they skim down further and they get to a video and they'll play the video and all these things keep people on your page longer, which is another ranking factor for Google and help answer their question even more and maybe like get them off on some other tangent where they don't click back and, and click on the next article because you, again, you've answered their question. Now they're off onto something else. Maybe they get into something else on your own website and they become now a visitor who didn't bounce. So these are the things that we're, we're working towards. And that's why, again, I find that having our own writers where I can really push this bar uh, works well because with a contract type writer, you know, they just want to get the job done and move on on the next article sure. and with our writers we can say hey look it's still not good enough like put more effort into it we're, we're going to keep paying you to, to keep putting more effort into it anyway because you're you know you're not getting paid by the article yeah so, well you anyway. also get to take that writer and teach them right so they're mm -hmm. going to learn from each time they do an article how to do it better you know or they understand the subject more because now you've kind of said hey make this correction or that correction to the article so what, what I want to get into a little bit, and, and let's uh, go a little more on this, is kind of the review side of using your own site to kind of build up this review, right? Like everybody goes on to Amazon, they put their product on, they put in there the bullet points of here's why it's better, here's the features that are better. So you could take that same bit of information, go and make an article that compares your product against the other competitors on Amazon, of course, you want to, yours will be first, right? But you got to, you got to give a good article on why, why is it first? How is it against others? So that's what you're doing, correct? Is, is you're creating these to be able to drive people to either your product or an affiliate product, depending on what you want to do more, more likely your own product, because you're going to get better margins off it. But that's what you're doing with these sites, correct? Yes. And so about 5% of our content is exactly what you're talking about. And the reason we do this is that we don't want Google to kind of flag us as one of these review type sites. Yeah. So we're an information authority is what we're trying to become at least uh, in, in the prepping uh, and survivalism space. Mm -hmm. That's the, the niche of the tactical market that we've decided to try to go after. Um, and there's obviously a ton of physical products that go along with this that we'll eventually want to develop. I mean, a huge wide range of things and we'll never run out of, uh, at least with our with all, we're never going to run out of things. Yeah. Um, and so it's exactly what you said. Um, but here's the thing, as I mentioned before, like we want to write the best article that's ever been written about this. And this is what the typical review site does is exactly what you're saying. They go on the Amazon, they type in like tactical gloves or something. They, they steal the Amazon photo and a couple of the bullet points and make like a short article and say like, this is the number one, two and three tactical glove uh, on the market. Yeah. We don't do and that. Yeah, and they're we, grabbing the content from Amazon, right? Grabbing the content from Amazon. Uh, Here's oh, what okay. we do. Yeah, I mean, which, which is fine. That's what people are doing. I get it. I used to be an affiliate yeah. marketer that did the same things. I'm not begrudging people for doing this. But again, if the bar is going to be higher for us, what, how do we approach that? So what we do is we go out and we buy all these products. Oh, wow. Step one. We like literally will spend hundreds of dollars to buy the what we deem to be like the top 10 to 15 tactical gloves. And then we ship all that to our content team and they actually like go take pictures of it and take video of it and try all of it. What we take them on a camping trip uh, usually once a quarter before COVID right now, this has kind of been put on halt, uh, halt but um, they actually go use all the products and they are able to get photography and it's all original stuff. Like this stuff has never been created. 
on the internet. And they have a pretty good feel for what actually is the best product at that point. And we actually start this process before we even develop our own product. We just know that we eventually want to develop tactical gloves. And so we're killing a whole bunch of birds with this one Absolutely. stone, right? We're, we're able to create original content, original photography and video content. Google loves all this stuff. We are able to eventually rank for a whole bunch of content around these physical products that is really valuable to build traffic for us. We now own all of our competitor, potential future competitors products. And we know what makes some of them better than others. And so when we go develop our own product, we can now make improvements upon the stuff that's off the shelf based on like the fact that we've tried these other things. And we don't even develop that stuff until we already rank for the article and see our affiliate links getting hits. And so basically when we launch a product now, it's almost as guaranteed to work as back in the days of when we first started on Amazon, where we could just yeah. buy these reviews. And, and so it's like, again, it's like, how do you turn this whole deck of cards from being where the deck is stacked against you? If you're not willing to do all the black hat stuff that the Chinese seller is doing, how do you compete against them? Well, this is our way of competing against them. It's a much longer road, but it's way more defensible. Like someone that wants to go try this new tactic tomorrow and compete against us, good luck to you. Like we are already years ahead of you. Um, <laughs> and, you know, the best you probably will ever do is rank second behind us, which is fine. Or, you know, and there's plenty of competitors that will do this type of strategy, which is, is fine, which is why we talk about it. We don't ever think we're going to corner the, all the world's sales for, for tactical gloves, but we just want to make you know, in our world where I can wake up every morning and know that our team is going to have a job that, you know, I don't have to worry about getting shut down overnight because of doing some black hat thing. And that in the future, if, if the dynamics of the world change, you know, where Amazon is no longer the number one platform, maybe Walmart starts to have a rise and we want to send the traffic over there, we can do that. And so, you know, it's, just, it's a much longer term concept, but I think it's a, it's a great strategy moving forward. I, I think that's amazing. I mean, this is something we have not talked about on the podcast. And I think that people need to really pay attention to what you just said, because this is a white hat strategy that is driving traffic to your Amazon listing. And B, it's actually what you're doing by going even a step further is helping you create a new product that's better than the rest and finding out yep. what's wrong with the current ones. And Hey, when we go to manufacture it, we're going to make sure though it doesn't have those issues or Hey, those features are good. Let's include that in our, our product. And that's something that's not talked about. And I think that's the reason I wanted you on the show, because this is incredible information. People are just not going this route. Like everybody's so focused on Amazon and finding a product to throw up on Amazon that you got to look at a bigger picture. You got to look at a bigger picture of building it out to a bigger brand having information out there regarding your on Google, regarding it, driving those links from Google into your Amazon. I mean, we talk, we do talk about like Facebook and stuff like driving traffic from Facebook, but this is just a whole nother avenue of going another direction to, to drive it. And the more times mm -hmm. you're driving traffic to your product from several different sources, it sounds like even like YouTube, you guys are doing videos on the product. There you go. Now you've got YouTube with a clickable link, probably in the description or a breakdown of which ones were good. And they, people can click through in the description and go through. There's another avenue coming in. So all yeah. these avenues coming in will build that product ranking up in Amazon and put you at the top. I mean, that's, that's exactly the way to go. I mean, this is, this is stuff that just nobody's talked about, Mike. And this is, that's perfect. That's perfect. So why don't you tell us a little bit about um, how did you come about getting a hold of treadmill.com? Mm -hmm. What year was it? If you could share how much you paid for it, because I'm thinking it had to be expensive. And tell everybody what you did with it and how you kind of cashed out on it. Give us that whole whole process. And then uh, after that, tell us more about Ecom Crew and uh, what you guys are offering. Sure. Yeah, I mean, treadmill.com was in that, that same era of I was collecting domain names. Mm -hmm. And so I was still am very fortunate that uh, I know a lot of domain brokers. And domain names, uh, and one of the real big negatives of owning domain names is they're, they're great assets, but they're illiquid. And so it's just like, if I... If I was in trouble today and had to sell a domain name to raise money, I would get a fraction of, of what it's worth. I mean, it would be just brutal. Yeah. Um, and so unfortunately, people end up in that situation. You know, it just they, they own these domain names and are like in, in panic mode. They need to get rid of it. I mean, arguably, treadmill.com is worth 
a quarter million, a half a million dollars, something in that range, I would, I would say. I mean, it's a pretty solid domain name. Uh, we ended up picking up for 80K, um, which I thought wow. was a pretty good deal for that domain name. Um, was it just it, parked at the time? It was just like, parked. It was just a parked domain park. name. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, it's a lot of money. I mean, it's it's not free. I mean, it was still, we, we had to kind of pony up, but uh, there were other people that were interested in it. So we, you know, that were kind of interested in it at the fire sale price. And so that's what it took to, to buy it at the time. And you know, my original thought was that, to, you know, eventually I'm going to develop this as an affiliate site, kind of like a lot of the other things that I was doing. Because this, again, this was 2000, I think 11 or 12 when I bought it. Okay. 2011, maybe. And so it was around that time where I was just like, I'm going to develop all these affiliate sites and all these different spaces. And um, there was kind of a crossroads where I, I kind of, you know, I don't know, I was out hiking one day and just kind of had this, this thought process as we're getting a little bit older. And it was, it was a tough conversation with myself of, you know what, I'm not really adding any value to the world by what I'm doing here. Like what I'm doing by recommending like one hosting company over another or one, you know, online college over another is recommending the one that pays me the most, which might not be the best. And confusing people, you know, someone's like searching for treadmills, like what's the best treadmill and they come find a, you know, a pro form 2000 on my website and they click through, you know, the buy now button and end up on sports authorities website. They're, most people don't even understand what the hell's going on. Yeah. And, and I was like, you know what, like, I don't really feel good about what I'm doing anymore. You know, it's like, I'm making money, but like, I'm not, I don't know. I, I kind of, uh, it's easier when you're getting more financially stable, you can start having these conversations, right? Like I don't ever look down upon someone that's just doing this stuff, um, you know, when they're younger or, or just they're, they're hungrier when you, you know, but I was able to, to start thinking about things a little bit differently. And that's actually how treadmill.com became to be. It was a park domain at that point. And I'm like, you know what? I want to get into e-commerce. I want to start like providing more value to the world. Like I, I would rather sell someone the actual treadmill then, uh, then send it off to an affiliate link, even though it's going to be more work. I feel like at least I can provide good customer service and I'm actually the one doing the transaction. And I also had a theory that like long-term that Google would, would like basically shut down these affiliate sites or you not shut them down, but like have them rank way, way worse. And yeah. that actually did come to fruition eventually. And so I was a little bit ahead of the game on that. Um, and yeah, I was just like, you know what? We're going to start selling treadmills. And uh, it was a rude awakening on, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, I had to go learn a new platform, which we ended up settling on big commerce and had to learn how to like develop a site. Oh, and you were on big commerce. I was on that platform. We were on big commerce. Uh, yeah. San Francisco we based, weren't they? 2012. Yeah. Uh, I think they're, I think they're in Austin. Maybe they are San Fran. I'm not sure. I, they, they maybe they started. Now. Maybe they started in San Francisco. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. I was on that. Um, yeah. Crazy. That's yeah, a tough I mean, it was, area. It was time. Like it getting was tough. into the treadmills, that's that's not easy. I mean, that's there's a lot involved in that, and uh, you know, coming up with you know the different features of it. So it, it's and you ended up actually developing this site, mm -hmm. going into the treadmill industry or creating treadmills and selling those. Now, did you end up selling that whole company? And how did, did it go? Yeah, we ended up selling it in January of 2015, and okay. I mean, there was a lot of things we learned along the way. Um, but the things I really learned was number one, I liked e-commerce. Like I really did enjoy e-commerce. Like I knew I wanted to continue to do that, but I knew I didn't want to sell another freaking piece of fitness equipment, um, because they're heavy, they're hard to ship. I, we were drop shipping them from another company. We, we didn't go out and develop our own treadmill cause that's yeah. not really physically possible. And yeah, you know, we didn't get the reception in the industry that I was expecting. I thought that, you know, all of the manufacturers are going to trip over themselves to, to be able to sell their products on treadmill.com because it's such a keyword category killing domain name. Yeah. That wasn't the case. It's a very legacy industry. And so only certain uh, manufacturers would sell to us. And they were the same ones that were selling on Amazon and Walmart and sports authority and everything else were competing against them and map pricing, all kinds of awful stuff. Um, and we didn't actually control the shipping process and customers were constantly pissed at us. There yeah. wasn't really good margin it turned out to be a pretty awful business in terms of being enjoyable. It was profitable, but like, I like doing things where, you know, I can have people be happy yeah. and, and, and just generally just be in a good mood. And so we sold it and, and we did well. I mean, we had a good exit. 
Um, was it one of the companies you were selling their brand for came back to you it about it? it or? I was oh, actually shocked with that too. I was so surprised. I thought when we went to sell it, one of them would snap it right up. And I thought they would be like, again, tripping over each other to, <laughs> to outbid the next one, to be the one that yeah. owned treadmill.com. That did not happen. Um, what ended up happening was uh, we got an offer from one of our competitors and uh, it wasn't quite what I was hoping for. I mean, it was like right pretty close to it. And I was like, you know what, give me, give me 30 days. And if we can't get a better offer, we'll sell it to you for what you're asking for. And the guy's like, okay, yeah. that's cool. Um, and so I went out to the, to the brokers that I had developed a relationship with to buy domains from. And uh, one of them was like, oh my God, I know a guy that will buy this from you. Like I'll know, I'll know tomorrow for you. And, uh, and he did like this guy owned exercisebikes.com that was a park domain. And he wanted to, to buy another business for his daughter who was like still in high school to have her like run it. I mean, it was a crazy story. The guy was like a multimillionaire and he outbid the other dude plus the difference for the, the broker commission. And so we made out great in this oh, whole wow. situation. And cause I was like, look, dude, you gotta like, you gotta beat the other guy and make it worth our while to like sell to someone who was a neophyte. That's going to take much more training than the other guy who I'm just going to hand this off to him and, and walk away. Yeah. And so the guy's like, okay, like I'll basically double the other dude's offer. <laughs> I mean, it was nuts. Wow. Um, and, and so it worked out great for us and uh, the rest is history. So they say. Yeah. Well, tell, tell us, how did you get Ecom Crew started and tell us about what you guys offer over there and what you do and uh, kind of inform everybody about ecomcrew.com. Yeah. So when we sold treadmill.com the same exact time, uh, same month in January of 2015, uh, I went and bought another business called icewraps.com. And the reason I did that is I had one employee, like treadmill.com ran a pretty lean business. We had one employee. The guy was awesome. Um, and as an entrepreneur, like it's hard to find good employees. Like, I mean, I don't know about you, but like, I mean, it's just, it's tough to find like really, really solid people. And this guy was in that category for sure. And I was like, you know what? Like, I want to go find my business that I can build around this guy. Like, I don't want to let him go. And so I found my business at bodyswaps.com. And uh, that's another whole long story, but <laughs> uh very early on in that process, because we bought an existing business and started growing it, uh, I also became a member of e-commerce fuel, uh, which is a great community for online sellers, seven figure sellers. If you are a seven figure seller, I highly recommend you go check out their, their site. Uh, the guy that runs, it's become a really good friend of mine. It's a great community. It's really changed my life. And the things I was talking about in there, like the people were like, Oh my God, this is like amazing. And I thought, for me, it was just like, I'm just doing my thing. Cause like I come at it from a tech background, right? I mean, yeah. most people come at e-commerce from a product background or they, you know, they invented something or whatever, but I came at it from a tech background. Like I'm, you know, replatforming and I'm, you know, talking about SEO and I'm talking about conversion rate optimization and uh, people were just like really consuming. And I'm like, you know what? Like there's something here. I'm going to start documenting all this stuff on e-com crew come hell or high water. I'm going to really commit to it. And I think that there's something in there eventually. And five years later, and, you know, 330 podcasts later and hundreds of blog articles. I mean, we've grown to be pretty big and, you know, one of the, you know, I think well-respected sites in the, in the business. And, and I think the thing that differentiates us is, I mean, we talk about all of our brands. Like, I mean, everyone knows that we sold trail mills at one point. We now own ice wraps. We, soulcolorite.com. We own Tactical. We own Wall Baby, which is another brand. We're about to buy another brand. Um, we're talking about all our products, you know, all the different SKUs and like things that we've done to optimize stuff and just show everybody because, you know, again, I mean, we're in a good place financially and I really enjoy helping other people. And so, you know, and I also don't think that I'm going to sell all the world's gel pens or all the world's tactical gloves or all the world's stuffed animals or whatever it is. Yeah. And there's going to be competition anyway. And this stuff helps me, you know, be on my toes. And so it's been fun. And, and almost everything we have uh, is free. You know, it's like a lot, it's a basically a freemium model. We do have a premium version of community where people pay and get access to some courses and things like that. But, you know, I would just encourage people to check out all the free stuff. Like if your you know, audience is more just getting started and doesn't really have the money to, to buy a training program or whatever, just go listen to all the free stuff. Um, there you go. Hundreds yeah. of free episodes of podcasts, hundreds of articles. Go go check out all that stuff. 
Yeah, go take so go take a look uh, at the free content over at ecomcrew.com. And this is Mike Jackness. He's a uh, co-founder of Ecom Crew. And Mike, thank you so much for being on the Ecom Wiz podcast. I really appreciate it. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And for more information, please visit feedbackwiz.com.